Okay. Hello, Alona. Hello, hello, Anna. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today to discuss um, the next model of our course. Um, thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. I um, hope I will be of use today. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will. Yeah. Well, it, it's just, you know, a friendly conversation um, yeah. related to some topics that are relevant for us, right? Uh, yeah. So how uh, has the course been so far for you? Has it been of any use? Yeah, absolutely. New sources. And, you know, just my personal takeaway, yeah? Uh, you remember that I have already done uh, the course with you uh, mm -hmm. on Delta Module 1. It was like a year ago. But the topics that we started with were actually somehow uh, at the end of that course. That's and right. I didn't have energy. I didn't have a lot of kind of resources to explore the topics uh, well enough that time. And the thing that we started with theories and with uh, approaches, uh, this time it actually helped because I was full of beans, I was full of energy. Uh, I read some articles, uh, useful uh, links that you shared, some videos were really, really insightful. And of course I did a lot. I um, I think now I have more like a clearer understanding of these theories and how they can be useful uh, at this course doing delta not yeah. only module one but also module two and three that we we'll exactly discuss. so that's the difference yeah between just classic delta model one preparation and our course mm -hmm. because yes, yeah. uh, we are touching upon many different topics um that are connected and somehow yeah. they're useful in terms of delta model one preparation as well and obviously yeah. it's just silly to talk only about some terms yeah at the beginning of the course something from task one something from task two um yeah what's what's the um, benefit of that right so i decided to focus on methodology first mm -hmm. big thing and everything else will be like beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good idea to do it like okay. this. So uh, the second model, um, I think it's quite peculiar. Yeah, to uh, to that extent that first of all it's practical because we all mm -hmm. use different types of speaking tasks for sure in our lessons. Maybe some yeah. teachers prefer to focus on writing as well. By the way, you are running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am teaching a lot of writing at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So those two areas are of particular importance for many of us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and this task that we can see in Delta Model 1. Uh, task 3, one, three task right? Three. In the first yeah. paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should say that, that that's, uh, that's probably my favorite one, yes. you know? I like it. <laughs> that's my favorite one because, yes, I... I focus on teaching productive skills mainly, you know, I am teaching for exams, yeah, for high level exams. And my firm belief is that uh, candidates can develop their um, receptive skills on their own. Mm -hmm. But if they sign up for courses with teacher, they first of all want to receive feedback and they want to develop productive skills, which we, they cannot do on their own. Yeah. And this is why uh, at the moment I'm teaching a lot of speaking and a lot of writing. And that's why I benefit from uh, the task yeah, I see how practical and useful they might be for the teacher who also uh, focuses and teaches productive skills mm -hmm. writing and speaking yeah exactly so let's talk about some terminology relevant for this uh, task uh, mm -hmm. well the first big thing that obviously appears like at the very beginning is discourse right discourse yeah yeah, discourse. Yeah, as so a like umbrella term, it? yeah, which encompasses both oral and written discourse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh here I have a question, by the way. <laughs> so discourse, yes, it's an umbrella term, right? It uh refers both to oral and written, mm -hmm. but uh I, I see I I seems it seems to me that I remember that if we talk about written discourse, then the term text emerges. Yeah. So and it's right. more relatable to the writing. Yeah. Uh, type of discourse yeah uh, well, is there any can be used actually to talk about both listening texts uh, and written mm -hmm. texts yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so yeah and also some other terms like genre for example yeah, because yeah. genres can be uh, can be both in written and oral discourse mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. now i have a question genres of of uh, it's more about writing right or can we any, any, a conversation, a friendly conversation is a genre. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, 
on negotiations or whatever. So if especially if teachers uh, work with business English, yeah, there might be different types of oral discourse, like uh, oral uh, like presentation, yeah, mm -hmm. or pitching, yeah. So these are all uh, types of discourse that might be useful. So you said types. Which is the synonym for genre? Because genre is a portion of genre, word, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah comes yeah. from French, um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great. Mm, awesome. Okay, so let me uh, just double check. I prepared a couple of visuals mm -hmm. for us. So the first thing I wanted to discuss, of course, what uh, discourse is. Mm -hmm. And um, I like this concise definition <laughs> um, uh, that yeah. I mm -hmm. in uh, Scott Thornberry's book. I think it comes from... <clears throat> Um, an A to Z of ALT. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's nice. One. Uh, that's a nice one. Any connected piece of speaking and writing piece. Yeah, that's a good one thing to remember because mm -hmm. uh, I I would add to that one uh, so, because for me it's also about production. Yeah, so any connected piece of speaking and writing pro produced by or is it necessary to, to by, mention by that? <laughs> By, a by uh, or a writer, by speakers, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then but it's, this is uh, obvious, yeah. right? That's why I like yeah. it. It's self-explanatory. Yeah, it's kind of there, right? Uh, productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, like beyond the sentence level. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also here. Mm -hmm. You can see it connected. So two posh terms appear right away. Yeah, do you remember them? Uh, or oh, which which. One? which Ah, cohesion and coherence. Absolutely. Exactly. Connection. If we talk about connection, mm -hmm. we definitely need to mention <clears throat> these two features of discourse. Yeah. yeah. Also, Scott Thornberry mentioned this metaphor. He compared text. Well, actually, you remind me. <laughs> if you match process, product and text and discourse, what do you think the correlation is likely to be? Uh, well, these are two approaches. Uh, what what I remember, what immediately pops up in my mind, yeah, mm -hmm. that a product is uh, about text, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And if we teach, but by the way, if even if we teach writing, yeah, mm -hmm. where the ultimate goal is to come up with a product, we might implement two different approaches, yeah, product and process approach. Yeah, Am okay. I on the right so, way, uh, or no, maybe I'm just deviating two, from the topic. Yeah, there are two ways of interpreting what I'm showing right now. Yeah, there, there, there are the process and the product approach to developing writing skills. Yeah, that's one thing. But here I'm referring to one of the metaphors, so-called definitions that Scott Thornberry suggested, like a text. Can... Uh, Anna, Anna, for some reason, uh, there was no sound uh, for a tiny bit. I didn't yeah. hear... Oh really? Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just my problem. Uh, you mentioned uh, like uh, the most important part of the sentence was missing. Like they refer to what? Sorry. Metaphors. Scott Thornberry uh -huh. defined uh -huh. discourse uh -huh. as process and text as a product. He compared them uh -huh. uh, these yeah. two things. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you um, just need to visualize it, think about text messaging. So one text message uh -huh. is the text. Obviously, and we call it a text. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the whole thread, the whole streak, yeah, like yeah, it's mm -hmm. discourse. It's right? discourse. Mm -hmm. Um, right. So I have a, a better definition put, um, yeah, from from our advanced methodology course put together, yeah, in my own words. So have a look. Anything surprising here? So we've talked about genre. We've talked about um, discourse level. Yeah. So what what is behind discourse level? Do you mean uh, different features? Yeah, of discourse. Yeah. yeah exactly. So what is highlighted? Here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, yeah. here is a hint on what we need to uh, brush up on. Yeah, what to, mm -hmm. terms we need to know, uh, different types of features, um, cohesion related or um, uh, coherence devices. Yeah, um, and this word cloud perhaps represents quite a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. which of the features from this word cloud do you think belong to spoken discourse? Back channeling, of Absolutely. course, back channel. Yeah. Uh, genre, as we said, yeah, utterance. Mm -hmm. Mm 
mm-hmm. than discourse. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, but okay, it can encompass both. But yeah, uh, inter interactional well, yeah, interactional talk, communicative competence, mm-hmm. turn taking. Yes, yeah, and reciprocal about discourse is mostly about mostly about discourse. speaking. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Overlaps, by the way, it's an important feature of an oral discourse. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. So we need to consider the differences between spoken and written discourse. It helps greatly mm-hmm. when you do this task. Mm-hmm. Because basically what you have to do is, yeah, let's <clears> have a look at the task. Yeah, and prepare this uh, extract from the handbook. Um, remember what is given. So before- Yeah, they give you, they already... Um... Ah, yeah. First of all, we need to take a look what we are talking about, writing or speaking. Exactly. Yeah, precisely. Yes, so here it will be productive, activity. yeah, activity for sure. Uh-huh. And they also give the level, if I'm not the mistaken. The level, absolutely, yeah. And one more thing that is given. Mm. Uh, the, 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 in the box, they give us uh, the, the task, task and two features. Uh, the two features are already given. Yes, two features. So some features, they give us a, a hint yeah, mm-hmm. on uh, some discourse features. And then we need to give more. Yeah? The other. And, and as far as I remember, if they give a feature of organization, for example, mm-hmm. it will be better if we come up with something uh, different. Absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Not in the realm of the yeah. given ones. Mm-hmm. What else do you do you have to give here? Examples, of course, yes. to illustrate the features that yes. you... An uh, example for each feature. Illustrate, and then you yeah. can earn, obviously, uh, 12 mm-hmm. points, yeah, and perhaps you'll be spending about 10 minutes, yeah, or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's quite... Uh, it's correct. also important, if I remember correctly, that uh, examples, even rele- if examples might be relevant, but if they do not reflect the point mm-hmm. that you have mentioned, uh, they are not evaluated. They are Absolutely, the, yeah. The the points features even if they are relevant, correct. first of all. Yeah, they should match. Mm-hmm. And then they will look if the the example matches that and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Okay, so uh, remember, you've talked about an acronym of some kind. Yeah, could you remind mm-hmm. me what hints I gave you uh, for what, task 5A? Yeah, there were several features, yeah, and the very nice acronym, ac- acronym to remember it. It's call, uh, call, yeah, like content, organization, layout, and language, yeah? yeah. And uh, actually, that was my question eh? <laughs> when we uh, just prepared for this mm-hmm. video, yeah? If we can use this uh, abbreviation, uh, this acronym here in this task. Absolutely. Uh, and it seems to me that we can, because yeah. most of the features, yeah, that this abbreviation includes, like organization, layout, uh, language, even style and register. By the way, are they there in, in calls, yeah? So at the end, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, of mm-hmm. so yeah, I'll, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they can help us remember what features, uh, what to think about when yeah. we need to come exactly. up with. So what extra does points this course in this entail? Task. Which features mm-hmm. we can consider? Yeah, those mm-hmm. questions that we can pose to ourselves and come up with different features like grammar, uh, vocabulary, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, discourse, uh, discourse. Um, what is it? Discourse. Maybe like. Discourse markers, linkers. Discourse markers, thank Co-hes- you very much. It slipped my cohesive mind. devices. <laughs> yeah, different mm-hmm. types of cohesive devices, obviously. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And there are different ways of um, uh, coming up with a term that is relevant. Yeah. Cohesive device or discourse markers. Both of them will be will be good enough, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there is no right or wrong answer. But this is definitely discourse level. So first, written or spoken. What is typical of this genre? And then uh, you come up with three features, and then you 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 consider the two points that are given uh, to avoid an overlap. Yeah, mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. should be completely different. You don't want to repeat yourself yeah, in any um, way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what can help us prepare for this task? It's relatively manageable and easy to do, but still, mm-hmm. we want to make sure we are perfect here. And we are earning uh, uh, some number of points. So what what do we do? 
Well, first of all, I, I would like, I thought I would start with uh, doing some reading, but maybe even before starting mm -hmm. to read, we can just implement a conscious approach because we are all teachers, yeah, and we uh, can approach uh, the tasks that we give to our learners consciously. Like when we teach some genre, for example, yeah, we can already think uh, what the features are, uh, what we need to include, uh, for our learners to uh, make most effective use yeah, of this task. Mm -hmm. So this is what I think would be the, the fir first and foremost. Yeah, That's right. In this and in this connection, yeah. Yeah, like in, in many books, yeah, especially exam uh, books, yeah, you can see mm -hmm. something like this given. Yeah, uh, like... Uh, yeah, uh, sample tasks. I think yeah, it and comes analysis. from first, yeah, maybe complete mm -hmm. first or something like that, or um, yeah, one of the exam books. And you can see the, the text of a particular genre that the, the students will have to produce. Yeah, In this case, it's a report, which is similar mm -hmm. to our uh, sample task from the handbook. And many different tips. And of course, the tips reflect what we actually need. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so Focus on, yeah. the most important features, like single out three key features. So what would mm -hmm. you choose? And it can be both linguistic. You can see useful language box. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. or something discourse level that is highlighted um, uh, around the text. So what would you pick for, for a report? Uh, could you remind me what what features were given? I think it was something about Don't forget layout, about right? what is given. Think about... Uh, okay. Absolutely. Features. There should be... Uh... Uh, register in the first place mm -hmm. that uh, the style that we use it should mm -hmm. be uh, objective in, we in, 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 impersonal yeah mm -hmm. and uh, this task does not uh, require expressing personal opinions yeah mm -hmm. we should uh, take an objective uh, approach to this task uh, then uh, in terms so of layout, factual absolute, information, right? Factual information, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than your opinion. Mm -hmm. And for this, you're using a, a specific language, formulaic language, exactly. yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in terms of layout, definitely, the, the layout, layout should be typical for reports. There should be a title, subheadings, bullet points to make it uh, more clearer for the readers. Mm. Yeah. So there are two ways actually of <clears throat> highlighting the features. Yeah, either go into something visual. Yeah, this is called a layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, layout. Uh, or yeah. going with the organizational features, content based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so both yeah. of them, again, are, are of equal importance, in my opinion, here. And here, if we talk about organization, of course, we start with uh, introduction, yes, yeah, just giving uh, the mm -hmm. readers uh, a general understanding what the report mm -hmm. is going to be about, and then we focus on the uh, on, on some Great. specific and language points. language-wise, what would you choose to highlight? Uh, language-wise, um, formal vocabulary. Would. Uh, in terms of grammar. Some specific grammar, like passive, uh, impersonal, some some impersonal. Mm -hmm. uh, then, um, as as I have already mentioned, some formulaic language to maybe introduce numbers, mm -hmm. uh, some factual information, or comparing. Maybe if we need to compare some mm -hmm. some bits and pieces mm -hmm. yeah, in this report. So for, for this, we need certain certain. So let's language. just um, have a look at the points given. Yeah. And yeah, Leo, have our yeah. mind about uh, the most important features that we can highlight. Mm hmm. Like, so they give layout and Lexis. Mm -hmm. So further, I would um, highlight, uh, again, language related grammar. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, uh, the area of language, grammar that uh, we need to use uh, that might be helpful when we write uh, reports. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that we use to present factual information and some numbers maybe as well. Okay. And uh, keep in mind the level, because just figures perhaps is not good enough for advanced learners, right? Just what? Sorry. Figures, you said, numbers. Uh huh. Well, and the third one, yeah? 
yeah yeah what what else what else organization yeah id okay. or had, however you know they give it the, in layout like six exactly. strengths so you, yeah you weaknesses. can report organization and layout so it's and layout so this to that um how about maybe coherence something exactly about cohesive devices i would cohesion, say cohesive right? devices. because they're always there in long text yeah mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. awesome. some so, references uh, maybe or something. yeah how we, we would present this in a better way yeah grammar Passive voice, for and then, bullet point. And then yeah. an example that you can take from, um, yeah, a report from that... the from the give. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. By the way, they do not give the a report. I, we even. have to come up. Yeah, our, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mm -hmm. have to come mm -hmm. up with mm -hmm. an example which is typical of reports. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, something like um, um, it is assumed. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, something. The report will further go on to give recommendations about blah blah blah. Things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there is no passive in your example right now. Uh, yeah, no passive. <laughs> but it's, you know, like, uh, for me, uh, for, but language was already given. Um, ah, okay. You, so. you, 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 okay. You are talking about factual information, presenting that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. That will be a good example. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some cohesive devices. Could you give an example? Well, that can be... Uh, <laughs> Nothing comes to mind <laughs> immediately. I, I I don't think that some 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 uh, straightforward ones will do, but maybe to sum it up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, because uh, we do have some kind of recommendation section, recommendation it's a kind features, of conclusion, yeah. mm -hmm. implications, and mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you you are suggesting mm -hmm. something there. Yeah. Maybe something. It is advisable. It is highly recommended to do do to do yeah. this this and that. Yeah, if we. Yeah, and this uh, this is good language, and they might be overlapping between the categories, right? Passive, for example, that's what, what you've just produced, yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, presenting information, yeah. So there are different ways of approaching it, yeah. So be clear mm -hmm. in terms of giving varied points, yeah, so that they mm -hmm. are counted. Great. Okay. Awesome. So that's been a very good beginning of this um, uh, second model, yeah, and I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll have maybe some newcomers who might be interested in exploring discourse level tasks yeah so let's yeah, see how hopefully. it goes mm -hmm. so alona thank you very much for joining me today yeah thank you so much for, for inviting me yeah it was okay. very nice to to brush up to already start working oh yes okay. um before before i finish actually this recording perhaps we can recommend some sources so i'm referring mm -hmm. to uh, beyond the sentence by beyond the sentence Hillary. Quite often, mm -hmm. yeah, when I um, just brush up on what we need to discuss in our uh, sessions, uh, what else would you recommend? Have you read anything on discourse or? Speaking? Well, yeah, I do have. I do. I don't think I have like re read the whole books, but still, I would recommend any books uh, about di discourse analysis in general. Mm -hmm. I think in my digital library, I have two books by. Uh, let me find it. Uh, by by Michael McCarthy, mm -hmm. that one. And I also think I used uh discourse analysis by Widowson. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I also yeah, some chapters, some me. some bits and pieces. Yeah. And of course, of course, the books which are specifically devoted to teaching speaking and teaching writing. Exactly. I think I have two exactly. such books. Like how to teach uh, speaking, how to teach writing. Yeah, how to, to teach it. speaking, how to teach writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also Thornberry uh, produced, I think, um, a book or two mm -hmm. on both of them. Yeah, like, as uh, usual, yeah. As usual. Whenever we discuss a topic, there must be some books by Scott. And Thornberry. they might be something more practical, uh, but um, we can take the language that is presented there, like conversation <laughs> strategies, for example. It's an old book. But if you flick through mm -hmm. the pages, you will see lots of functions that are available, you know, and they're offering mm -hmm. for spoken discourse. Um, and um, I'm also planning to share an article from um, ELT Journal, a magazine, mm -hmm. whatever it is called. Yeah, anyway, um, on um, developing writing skills, yeah, discourse level mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in that area. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Explore. Yeah, so I think we'll have three sources that we will have to explore. It'll be a must, mm -hmm. and then some mm -hmm. optional sources that I can add up uh, during the model. 
just, you know, mm -hmm. to, uh, for those who are still enthusiastic and full of energy and want to read more, some advanced, advanced teachers, yeah, to elevate their excellence and so on. All right. Yeah, that would be great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again.